Hello, good morning everyone, greeting from London. Well, in today's video is going to be about the pros and cons of living in Luang Prabang. My previous video I explained about the cost of living in Laos and today I'm going to give you some idea about the pros and cons if you were to live in Luang Prabang. Just like any other cities, Luang Prabang also has its good and bad. And speaking from my own experience after 20 years living in Luang Prabang, I have to admit that this little town is like magical. It has this beautiful character, very nice scenery, and very, very peaceful. Of course, there are many Buddhist temples and it's very easy to fall in love with it. However, as good as it may sound, it does come with advantage and disadvantage living in this town for a long term. By the way, I'm not native to Lone Prabang. I grew up in the north, but I moved to Lone Prabang when I was around nine years old and I happened to live there uh, forever. So this is my home now. Uh, so in today's video, I'm going to give you some idea of what you would expect if you were to make Luang Prabang your future home. Let's get started with the pro. For me, number one is the peacefulness. For those who have been to Luang Prabang would know how peaceful Luang Prabang is. It's, it has this nice character, very beautiful, surrounded you know, with great sceneries, rivers, mountains, and for those who love quietness, Luang Prabang is definitely a home for you. And number two for me is the nature. Talking about nature, Laos has a lot to offer. Rivers, mountains, scenery, forests, all kinds of forests, you name it. And Luang Prabang is located right in the middle of them all. I mean, how convenient it is, you know, just five to 10 minutes on a motorbike and you're completely out of town, surrounded by greenery and nature. And this is one of the many things I like about Luang Prabang, and many people say the same thing. And number three for me is the people. For those who have been to Luang Prabang would know how friendly and how welcoming the locals are towards tourists. The very common greeting you'll hear after you arrive in Laos is called Sabadi, which means hello. I mean, Lao people in general are very open-minded, very kind and very humble. You'll see smile everywhere, not just in Luang Prabang. In fact, the more remote you go, the more friendly people are. And they're just so humble and very curious, you know, when seeing new faces in their village. So if you happen to get lost and find yourself somewhere in the countryside, and if people come staring at you, don't get offended or scared because all they want to know is to make sure that you're okay or not. And all you can do is just start a conversation or smile to them and that's it. And number four for me is food. I think live food is probably one of the healthiest that exists because it's fresh and lots of veggies. In Luang Prabang, for example, every morning and evening you will see people selling fresh produce just on the side of the streets and at the local market where you can just buy and bring home and make your healthy home cooked meal. Uh, it's very rare to see frozen food and ready to eat meal like here in London. Sometimes at supermarket you will see frozen seafood and some other imported products. But everything at the local market are mostly very fresh. And number five for me is walkable distance. Because Luang Prabang is so small, it's very easy to get around from one place to another just by motorbike or by bicycle or even by walking. I mean, for many, many years, I never owned motorbike or bicycle because I love walking. However, it does get very hot from April till the end of June. So if you were to live in Luang Prabang for a long term, maybe consider getting an e-bike or motorbike so it's convenient for you to get around. Okay, now let's talk about some of the cons. The con number one for me is sleepy and boring. Like I said, Luang Prabang is pretty small so there's not a lot going on in this town. I mean, every now and again, we do have public events like boat racing, Lao New Year, and some other religious events that is quite interesting like Diana Buddhist Land or Candlelight Festival. Those are nice. However, apart from that, it can be quite dead, especially during low season when there's no tourists around. It's, it's way too quiet that you can get bored sometimes. If you were to live here, forget about concert venue or opera or movie theaters. It's not exist here, so yeah, you have to get used to with this quietness. And number two for me is the curfew, because Luang Prabang has so many Buddhist temples, especially in the center area from the night market up until the end of the peninsula. Monks have to go to bed early and wake up early in the morning to pray and meditate, so it has curfew. So from 10.30 p.m., everything has to be closed. And if you were to order some meal in the center area, 
make sure you place your order before 9 p.m. Otherwise, you won't have your dinner. Anyway, but apart from that area, you know, outside of those area, uh, some nightclubs and bars are open late until 12.30 or even 4 a.m. There is some place that's still selling barbecue at midnight that you still can enjoy your midnight snack and so on. So yeah. And number three for me is unpunctuality. If you were to live in Laos, you have to get used to with things are not on time and because the way of we live our life is very laid back and very easy going and it sometimes can be frustrating I know especially for those coming from country like Germany or Switzerland that everything is so in place and very organized and very punctual if you live in Long Provang you know with a lot of people you have to get used to it let's say if you have a group meeting at 10 a.m. some people will show up at 10 30 and for us a lot of people we say like Bopinyang, which means it's okay. Yeah, if you live in Laos, you have to get used to with that. And even transportation, like the bus, when they say, okay, it's gonna leave at 8 o'clock, forget about it. It may leave at 8.30 or 9, you know, sometimes, and you have to, you know, cope with it. And that's the way we live. And that's why there's a joke, you know, La PDR, that means La people don't rush. <laughs> anyway. Number four is international shipping. If you live in Laos, you have to cope with the shipping crisis because the system just doesn't work. I mean, there's a Lao Post, the national shipping company, and also very cheap. It takes between three to five months to ship things from Laos to the US, for example. I mean, back many years ago, when me and my brother used to run textile shop, Every now and then we would have customers from the US, from Japan and from other countries, you know, who bought our products and wanted us to ship to their home country. And it never worked because, like I said, it takes such a long time to reach their home country and sometimes it never arrives. So it's very frustrating. I mean, you can use EMS and DHL, but those are very expensive. It would cost you between $50 to $75 per kilo. That was back then. Now, I think it's going to cost even more. So if you live in Laos and if you're thinking of shipping items to your home country, do expect to pay a lot or very long delay. Number five is limited resource because Laos imported so many things from other countries like Vietnam, Thailand and China. And sometimes having money is just not enough because you can't buy everything that you want. Let's say back then when we had the store, we also did tailoring and just to get a good zipper, I have to fly to Bangkok to get it from there because we don't have it in Laos. You see, something like this is so frustrating and forget about ordering it from China, from Alibaba or whatever online platform. 70% of my purchase, my order never arrived. It lost somewhere. So, I mean, in some way, I kind of like it that we can't get everything we want, even though it's frustrating sometimes. Uh, it kind of teach me to live with what we have and honestly it makes me happy that way. For example, here in London, they have everything. All you need is just money. You can just go to the high street like Oxford Street and you can get whatever you want there. And it's way too materialistic and I'm not sure if that's gonna make me happy. Anyway, yeah, that is in that sense it kinda make me happy that we can just live up, you know, on what we have. And number six is the heat. As we all know that Laos is a tropical country and especially from April until July, this time of year is so hot, sometimes it can be unbearable. And if you were to live in Laos for a long term, do expect this. Anyway, this is my update on what are the pros and cons of living in local bank Laos. If you ever consider making local bank your future home, these are some of the things that you should know. Thank you for watching and enjoy your day. Bye bye.